Appreciate everybody being here. Appreciate getting the invitation back. Um, I've been debating about doing this, but Brother Jamie brought up uh, earlier a while ago, we were, we were talking last night about devils, demons, and uh, different things like that. I came here uh, last year and uh, just prayed about it, and I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll try that. And I preached a message on UFOs, aliens. They're in the Bible. You can call them devils if you want. That's exactly what they are. And I'm going to I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to show you a picture of one. Just to, this came to me from a Independent Baptist preacher up around Lake of the Ozarks, and uh, his cousin. This is um, Mount Princeton. And it's near uh, Buena Vista, Colorado. And um, the, they, his said, he said his cousin was out there visiting. And they just took it. Let me, let me give you a broadened snapshot here. They said they just took a snapshot of the mountains. So they were pretty. If you've ever been to Denver and uh, seen the Rocky Mountains from there, they're just absolutely... Denver's, Denver's the city... Where everybody, when they got to the Rocky Mountains, went, I ain't climbing that. And they stopped right there. Okay? That's Denver, Colorado. And, um, but they're just beautiful. But the, after they took the picture, they noticed that there was something weird about the cloud formations. And I'm going to do a little zoom in here. You see something there. So they, they spliced it, enhanced it. And what do you see? That is, ex that is an almost identical to what Ezekiel described in Ezekiel chapter 1. Where the chariot of the Lord. The Bible says the chariots of the Lord are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Chariots are, them are themselves angels. What did Elisha awaken his servant to? Lord open his eyes. What did he see? Chariots of fire and horses of fire. When Solomon built his temple and he built the, the, the mount that held the Ark of the Covenant, he built it like a chariot. It had, ax it had wheels, it had axles, had everything just like a chariot. God ride. I don't know why God rides a chariot, but I bet he looks good in it. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. And you know what I think? Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says that God's going to send his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds. He's going to come and get us. Amen. And what, how did, what was, what was there with Elijah and Elisha sitting there? A chariot of fire. I hope mine's at least got Bluetooth. <laughs> All right, I'll quit joking. But that's a real picture. Okay, that's not Photoshop, that's not, that wasn't put in there. This stuff is real, people. Okay, now I'm going to get off that, and I want you to take your Bible, uh, John chapter 10, just follow with me, you pray for me. Uh, we, of course, we've been hit with the COVID round 8. Just like everybody else has, I've, I've been over it for about a week, my voice is still a little bit weak. Uh, we stream, we did a stream only service Wednesday. We're going to do a stream only service tomorrow just because some folks have it in our church and we just don't want a repeat of, uh, the last time we don't want to, the, we've got some people now that, um, they had it the last time. I don't think they'll survive it this time. So we just, we're just trying to be careful and try to be cautious. And, uh, Brother Mike, God bless you. I, I wanted to do backflips while he was preaching last night. The only thing that kept me from it was gravity. <laughs> um, because you're right. We, I, I, I lost a family out of our, and I never thought I would lose this family. But it was over the whole COVID thing and everything they believed from the internet. Sure. They'd been reading their internet, but they hadn't been reading their Bible. And uh, we lost a whole family over that. And it, and it took me by surprise. But, it, but anyway, we're living in dangerous times. You've heard me preach that before. 
And I prayed about what I was going to do this year. And I've, I'm working on a new thing on the Bible translation issue. And I don't have it ready yet. It's going to take a lot of work putting it together. Uh, but we're living in a time where these Bibles are constantly changing. How many of you know preachers that use the New American Standard Bible? In their study. How many, raise your hand so, so I can see you. I can't see you. Okay. You know some preachers that use the New American Standard. Ask them which one they're using now. Because there's two of them. One that came out in 1995. If you go to blueletterbible.org and look, on, they, they give you a list of different Bibles that you can search through. There's a New American Standard Bible 1995 and a New American Standard Bible 2020. And they're not the same. They're not the same. They're different. They've had to alter it. Did you know there's five different NIV translations that have come out since 1970? Five different NIV translations. The NIV Bible that when I first started doing this stuff back in the year 2000 on the Bible translation issue and I had a, I had a NIV Bible that I bought my wife for her birthday and she hated it. Amen. <laughs> And, uh, and I was using it to, to do research on it, find out what was changed, what was missing. And I have that in a presentation. I've got it. I still got the presentation from all the way back then. And when I got to look in on Blue Letter Bible at the NIV to find those verses, they had altered those verses since the Bible that I bought my wife. They're not the same anymore. We're now into the 28th revision of the uh, Nesalaland Greek text which underlies all, all Bibles all over the world. English, French, Spanish, Swahili, you name it. It underlies all the Bibles. 28th revision which tells you what? They changed it 28 times. Now they're working on the 29th revision. If you remember uh, some of the information I gave out previously back in the 1980s, they had a Jesuit priest on the Greek New Testament committee. As of today, there is still a Catholic priest on the New Testament Greek committee. He's a different guy. But it's, there still is a Catholic presence in the Bible translation issue. And it, this is what's going on. The Catholic Church has got their digs everywhere. They're very, listen, the serpent's very subtle. And uh, I want you to pray for me while I preach wolves in sheep's clothing. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Just since, I would say since I really started, since God changed my mind about the Bible. Our church has come under attack probably a dozen times. At least three or four times major, major attack. Where people actually, in mass volumes, left the church. And it was over wolves who were not sheep inside of our church. I've experienced it firsthand. I've seen it. I, I'm preaching. I'm not going to preach anything to you guys that you don't know. But I'm going to be like Peter. I'm going to stir up your remembrance. And get you to remember that the days that we're living in, we're not getting better. We're getting worse. And God did not call us to build mega churches. And maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not the Pope. I'm not anybody that tells anybody how to build a church because God knows I don't know how to do it. Everything that God's done, God's the one that's done it. But maybe, maybe the reason why some churches are not growing is because God knows the pastor, the shepherd, will not protect the sheep that he sends there. Give you something to think about. John chapter 10. Are you there? Say amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, the door, the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. If you come home one night, you got a teenage daughter and you see a boy climbing in that window. He ain't there for dinner. 
Amen. Amen. He's a thief and a robber. Trying to steal your daughter. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. To the sheep hear his voice and calleth his calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. By the way, we know what our shepherd's voice sounds like, doesn't it? It sounds like letteth. <laughs> and half. And thou. And thine. And thee. Amen. That's my shepherd. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. So if I turn the radio on, I hear a preacher. And we'll listen to him until he starts quoting scripture. And when he, when he don't go on the end of the word, I'm turning it off. He's a stranger. A stranger will they not follow. By the way, study, study the word stranger in the Bible. You want, to, you want to see aliens in the Bible? Study the word stranger. You know, a, you know, angels are strangers. Be careful to entertain. You know why they're called strangers? They are born, they're not born here. They're not from here. Study it. Uh, a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. No, I don't believe in little green men from Mars. They're gray, they're not green. Anyway, <laughs> a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of, of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Father, just bless me and help me today. Father, you know what we've been through. You know what we're still going through. You know, Lord, the... The stuff that's on me, Father, just bless, bless your word, make it worth something. Uh, all the things that all of these preachers and all these good saints go through, the persecution, the trials, the tribulations, the fallouts, the fights, the people that get mad, Father, make it worth it. Lord, make it worth it. Make, make it so that our labor's not in vain. It's all we ask. Father, just bless your word today in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Now turn over to Acts chapter 20. You can try to follow with me. Somebody asked, why do I like to put... put it, why does Hoggard put everything on the screen? Because when I see a picture, I like to draw a mustache on it. No, this just kind of... I, I, sometimes I use pictorial examples... To show people what's going on, but it's just kind of the way I've gotten used to work over the years. Acts, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. This is, this is the Apostle Paul. This is like his last thing. And if you notice, in every church the Apostle Paul started, this exact thing happened. When he, when he preached up to the Galatians and he, he initiated the churches that were up there and he got them going and he left men to, and he went to go somewhere else and he left men there to pastor there. What happened? As soon as he left, wolves came in. As soon as he left, the Corinthian church, when he left there, what happened? Wolves came in. We know we have two letters to the Corinthian church in our Bible, but we know from the Bible that he actually wrote four letters to the Corinthian churches, straighten out the mess that the wolves started when they got there. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves. Watch what's, hey, quit watching the news. Quit watching what Biden can't say. <laughs> Take heed unto yourselves, he said, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. If man called you, you ain't called. But the Holy Ghost put you there. And it's not your church. It wasn't your blood that paid for it, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now let me tell you, I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to tell you stories about my church. I got a letter years ago. This would have been probably 2002, 2003. And I remember asking you, Mike Hutzel, what it was all about. Because I got a letter about an issue in the denomination of Free Will Baptists about the, whether or not the blood of Christ was divine. And it was based upon 
an article or a paper that was written by my very first pastor, A.B. Brown. He was at Bethel when my mom got saved. 1974, that's how long I've been there. And in 2004, I was going to have a 30th anniversary homecoming and have A.B. come back and preach the message because he was the pastor that was there. And you know me, when I read stuff, I go, yep. And I didn't read it. And Brother Mike, you and I were talking, and it was out at your cabin, Brother Lonnie, and you told me that it was that he was disputing that the blood of Christ was divine. And I went, he said that? Then I went back and I read the paper, and I went, uh-uh. He's not preaching behind my pulpit. There is no way. I didn't call him. He trampled on the blood of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you how he did it. This verse, which clearly says God's own blood. He said, now the original Greek. This is a wolf now. The original Greek has in it the essence of the blood of his son. Who doesn't say that? If God didn't say it, he didn't say it. Amen. 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 So anyway, also, also, wait a minute, back to verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. You ever had a wolf in your church? Also of your own selves. That means in your own denomination. In your own district. Shall men arise speaking what kind of things? Perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That gives you their modus operandi or their, the reason why they're doing it. They want to draw them away from you. And bring them to them. I've had that happen. Therefore watch. Do what? Tie time to wake up, Brother Mike Hutzel. I tell you what. He set me up for this message. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And I guarantee you, in your church, God knows who's saved and who isn't. And if you'll pray and you'll be in this book and you'll watch your flock, and watch over them the way a diligent shepherd should and not a hireling, God will show you who the wolves are. Matthew chapter 7, turn there. Verse 15, Beware false prophets, which come to you in what? Sheep's clothing. Let me, let me give you something real simple. I think this is pretty cool. You ever had a Freemason in your church? You ever had Freemason in your church? What do they wear in their lodge meetings? Around their waist? A lamb skin apron. They are wolves wearing what? Sheep's clothing. And let me tell you something. Freemasonry is not is not the same as Bible Christianity. It is totally, the. it is Satan's religion. It is. And I, the last, the last out that I had with the district that we were in, the Free Will Baptist District we were in, I'm not going to name it, but the last, the last straw was... I was sitting on the executive board. I don't know why they put me on the executive board. Not a good idea. And I brought up, I said, uh, and the, the head of it, you, some of you might know the name. I, and he said, we got any other business? I said, I'd like to pass a resolution that said that no officer of any Free Will Baptist Church in this district can be a Freemason. 
And the, the main pastor of that district, who was the head of that executive board, said, laughingly, jokingly, he said, well, well, I'll tell you what, won't you wait a year till I'm off this board and then you can do it, because two of my deacons are masons. Last, that was the last meeting we went to. We're done. We're done. But they're wearing sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Brother Reg Kelly preached this years ago, and he said, I'm going to give you some deep theology. Wolves in sheep's clothing are not sheep. They're not. They're not born again. They're not saved. They're... Now, I'm, I'm not talking about young Christians who don't know a whole lot that need to be nurtured and fed and taught and things like that. But I'm talking about evil people coming in here. And you know how we are when we get visitors and guests. We go, Woo! Oh, oh, we're so glad you're here. Oh, we, hey, we finally got one in. Woo-hoo! Let's keep them here this time. Let's don't run them off. Then you find out you're, they're a wolf. Run them off. You shall know them, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their... Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Study the fruits of the Spirit. Study Galatians. Study the fruits of the Spirit. If they've got them, they got them. If they don't, they don't. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot, it cannot, these people will not do your church any good. They will not do your denomination any good. They will not do the cause of Christ any good. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast where? These people are going to hell. And you know what they're there for? Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and UFOs. Or spiritual wickedness in high places. Devils. By the way, I, devils come in all forms. But I've never seen one with a pitchfork and a fork tail. Okay? Uh, but anyway... They, they're going to hell. And there was, there was a spirit in them and on them that brought them in, that commanded them, that told them to go to your church and do as much damage as possible. To destroy that church, to tear down that church, to destroy the pastor's reputation. To get him compromised somehow, some way, so that his hands are tied. And he's still going to be the preacher, but he can't say what God said to say anymore. Because the wolves brought a den with them. Hey, we like this church. We're going to start telling our family to come and join with us. Then they bring all kinds of little wolves with them. And they start filling your pews. And pretty soon they got voting power. Wherefore by the fruits you shall know them. Bible description of wolves. All you got to do is study wolf, wolves. In the King James Bible, God will give you the definition of it. Benjamin, Genesis 49, 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. They're always hungry. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. You know what spoilage, spoilage is, don't you? You stick it in the refrigerator, and you think that after six months it's still going to be good. But something stole it. Little green things growing out of it that's eating it before you got a chance to eat it. And you thought, well, that was good Chinese food back... When did we get this, hon? They're there to take what doesn't belong to them and your church and your, uh, your family. Apply this to your family. Dads, be shepherds. Be shepherds. Pastors, be shepherds. Men in positions in denominations, 
Be shepherds and learn to spot when the wolf preachers are moving in. Because a denomination will sure send them down. Jeremiah 5, Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. There it is again. A leopard shall watch over their cities, and every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces. Watch this. Because their transgressions are many. We're talking about people who are wicked, evil sinners. Their transgressions are many. By the way, this, is, this describes why God would send wolves or allow wolves to come into a church. And yes, I said God. God will allow the wolves to enter into a church. Because they go at, they know, they can smell corruption a mile away, can't they? You see, wolves are scavengers. They don't care if it's alive when they kill it or stinking dead after they come up on it. They're going to eat it. And maybe, just maybe, there's sin going on in your church that you don't know about. I guarantee you, God's going to let wolves come in. They're going to get devoured. Maybe, maybe there's sin in your church because you're not preaching to those people's sins. Maybe. And their backslidings, and I'm not saying anything to you that I haven't made these same mistakes. In all the years I've pastored. You want to know how to do it the wrong way? Come talk to me after the service. And I'll tell you. Their backslidings are increased. We have backsliding churches. So naturally we're going to have churches full of wolves. God sends them to sinful Christians and backsliders. Um, I, I, I'll tell you a family I know. A, a man and his wife... And I've known them for several years. They homeschooled their children. Taught them well. Their oldest son was actually going to, actually went to a fundamental Bible college. While at the fundamental Bible college, he got taught wizardry and sorcery by other students. And it just, just blew the family away. And then, they didn't know it. But their teenage daughter was being preyed upon by teenage lesbians. And they snatched their daughter away just like that. The, home, the daughter was still being homeschooled, protected, prayed over by godly parents. And the wolves came in and stole their daughter right out from underneath them. That, I wouldn't say that was the parents' fault. I would say the daughter. Because I met the daughter. And I looked the daughter in the eye while I talked to her. And Brother Craig, I knew what was there. There was a foul spirit all over her. The wolves came and got her. By the way, that's what happens when you backslide. You're in wolf territory now. Better get right with God. Ezekiel twenty two twenty seven. her princes. Now, now we're talking spirits. Princes in the Bible are principalities. So now, see, I don't just think UFO stuff. That's not what I'm... Even though I've got a, whole, I've got a website called ufopastor.com. I'm the only one that has it. I looked it up. Nobody had it. I went, I, I, I bought it. And you know what? I went to the Mutual UFO Network convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, back in August. And guess what? I was the weird guy at a UFO convention. <laughs> I was. So much so, a German reporter came looking for me. And he did an outstanding article because he took me in a room and he just started asking, he said, he said, I grew up Catholic in Germany. And he said, I'm not Catholic anymore. But he said, I'm looking around and he said, I see this 
Protestant pastor at a UFO meeting. He said, what in the world are you doing here? We were there just giving out DVDs, passing them out all over the place. I mean, we gave out hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of DVDs to those people because those people need to hear the gospel too, don't they? They need to hear it. They need preach to. They need somebody who knows the Bible that can tell them what this stuff really is instead of what they think it is. And he wrote a fantastic article about me, put it on his website over in Germany. And I've, I've heard now that a, some kind of magazine, a Protestant European magazine, has picked up the article and ran with it. And in that article, ufopastor.com, and I'm hoping that people who, wherever they live, they go to that website and they find out the truth of the very evil spiritual devil things that are going on in this world. The devil has many faces, doesn't he? Just so you know, I'm not nuts. That way. Hey, man. For princes in the midst thereof are like wolves. Princes are principalities. They're devils. Now we know that wolves are spirits. Native Americans believe that, didn't they? Indians believe that, don't they? Wolves are spirits. Ra ravening the prey to shed blood and destroy souls to get what? Dishonest gain. So when a man in the church is taking out money that doesn't belong to him out of the ties... wolf when the pastor is doing the same thing and it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand dollars that you steal it'd be five bucks you got wolfish ways ravening the prey to destroy souls to get dishonest gain they are spirits who use human agents to destroy souls and money is their primary purpose you know what I think is funny when you study Ezekiel 28 and uh, which describes Satan. You know, he loves merchandise. And he is a master trafficker. He's the one in charge of the commerce of this world. He, for some reason, the devil likes junk. <laughs> merchandise. Amazon, eBay. He likes that stuff. He likes, for whatever reason, the devil loves making money. I don't know why, but he does. Zephaniah 3.3 3 says the same thing. Her princes within are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. That means they hunt in darkness. Which means there's no light. And I want to tell you preachers, when there's no light in your messages, you're going to have wolves. Because they can't handle Bible verses. They can't handle that, can they, Brother Jamie? You brought to me a situation. I'm not going to say what it was, but you know exactly. I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. I know exactly what we're talking about, don't we? And what worked? Works every time. John chapter 10. Back to John chapter 10. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any, enter in, any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. He'll be fed. He'll be taken care of. You people in the congregation, in the pews... There is only one pastor per church. <coughs> only one. And it's not a she. Devil. It's a man who stands with the, the invested authority that God has given him through the scriptures. And no other authority. There's no two-headed preachers. There's no three-mouthed preachers. There's one head per church. And that's it. 
I come, let's see, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That's, that's the opposite of a hireling. Back in 96, we um, had to ask the pastor of our church to step down. And I had gone through so much at the time. I was associate there. I didn't want, I didn't want it. I didn't want the job. So we went, we called around. We called the home office. We called the denomination. Said, Give us, we need a pastor. I had a guy call me. And I don't remember his name, so I couldn't tell it to you. And I said, where are you from? And he told me where he was pastoring. And I said, okay. I said, uh, well, we, you know, we, our pastor just stepped down. And I said, we're kind of looking for a, another man to fill his place. And he said, where about are you located? I said, well, Festus, about 30 miles St. Louis. He said, that's around Bon Terre, isn't it? I said, yeah. He said, good, because that's where my mother is in a nursing home. And I'd like to move down and be closer to her. And when I got off the phone with him, I went, I'm not calling him back. Because the reason why he wanted to pastor Bethel Church is not because he liked it, wanted, wanted the church, not because he was going to be a good pastor for the church or a good shepherd for the church. He just wanted to be close to mama. So I didn't call him. Make sure your motives are right. Hirelings, and he mentions hirelings here. Uh, he says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, why is he there? I listened to guys when I was in Bible college who planned out their whole ministry career. I'm going to get this church and then I'm going to get this church and then I'm going to get published. And then I'm going to go for a much larger church and then I'm going to get into denominational politics I'm going to work my way toward the top. They had it all planned out how they were going to do it. And let's be honest. Some of these young guys, and, or maybe some of the older guys, I don't know. That's the game that they play. They don't mind starting out taking a smaller church. But they're only there until the invitation from a much larger church comes their way. And as soon as it comes their way, they are going to leave that church because there's more money at the next one. You're not kidding me. You're not fooling me. Don't stand there and say, God wants me to go there to that church and leave this one. And that poor church has suffered every two or three years. Another pastor, another pastor, another pastor, another pastor. Hirelings. Hirelings. Not shepherds. Whose own sheep are not. Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. Or they'll, watch this, they'll pastor the church until trouble starts. And when trouble starts, or when they start, when, when people start talking about the pastor and the sins that they find out that he's got, and he starts feeling the heat, then he says, God has called me to a different church, and they leave. Because they've scandalized the name of Jesus in that town and they're leaving and going somewhere else. This poor church out in Oklahoma where their pastor was sharing his wife with another man and the other man blew his brains out while he was asleep. Freel Baptist Church, y'all hear about that? What chance does that church have? That whole town. Listen, the whole country knew, found out about that church. The whole country found out. France found out about that church. You think that church stands a chance now? Not unless God gets in there. And I've prayed for that church. I don't know much about it. I know the pastor, he was an NIV guy. But let me tell you something. It ain't just the NIV preachers that go bad, is it? Let me ask you a question. How many
many of you know, personally, I'm not talking about you saw one on TBN. How many of you personally know a pastor or an evangelist that you found out was a wolf in cheap clothing? Raise your hand. King James guys go bad, don't they? Or they were never right to begin with. Verse 12, he that is an hireling and not the shepherd who is on the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. The wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. That's his job. Disperse, scatter, chaos, pieces, tear, tear, wolves. If you want to watch something neat and grotesque, go to YouTube and type in African dogs, African wild dogs. There are dens of these African painted dogs. And they all sound like children laughing when they're barking. And they're little tiny little things. But they always hunt in packs. And because of their size, they know they're small. They know the li when the lions show up or the hyenas, it's over with. But they will catch one of these great big, I don't know what you call them, the deer over there, whatever. One of these great big horned Deer things, antelope or whatever. They'll catch one of those things and in five minutes have it deboned. They, they just gnaw the bone, they just gnaw the meat off and guts and everything and fill it in their belly and then they take it back to the den and puke it up to the pups that are hidden in the den. But in five minutes, they have that whole thing torn completely apart. That's what will happen to your church if you're not careful. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. My question is, do you know the shepherd today? Does he know you? That's the important part. Second Peter chapter 2. Turn there because we're going to visit in there for a while. Cooks, tell me when the biscuits are ready. 2 Peter chapter 2, if you want to do a good study on that, I'm sure you've already done it. But you as laymen, you as laymen, back up your pastor. Study what he's studying. Take time out of your week. Turn off the hunting channel. Turn off whatever it is. And study... What's your pastor, study the chapter your pastor preached out of last Sunday. Study that and get to know it. That way, the more he preaches, you back him up on it. And then he preaches, he don't have to ask you to say amen. You stand up with your Bible and say, I read that last week, that pastor's right! <laughs> and he's going. <laughs> Study second, second Peter and Jude are companion. You know, they tell you stuff in Bible college like, it, it could be that Peter and Jude read from a source document and they copied it. And, ah, the Holy Ghost told them the same thing. Amen. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1, there were false prophets also among the people back then, way back then in those days. That's why we have... 1,189 chapters full of really good stuff to preach on, 66 books. That's why we have all these stories in the Bible so we can learn about wolves and sheep's clothing and false prophets and spirits and aliens and UFOs and ghosts and everything that people don't believe in. I, I think the world's changing. People are believing in ghosts now. People are believing in paranormal things now. People are getting into witchcraft now. And you be careful because girls in your Sunday school class may be reading books on witchcraft. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Among you! In your church, in your denomination, in your district. The evangelists that you called in to preach the meeting. You could be a wolf. And if you knew the Bible well enough, and you listen to him long enough, you'll hear him howl. And you'll go, he ain't coming to my church. 
who privily, that means secretly, slitheringly, subtly. Isn't that neat that the letter B is in the word subtle? You'd never know it. Except some of you that say, subtle. You're ruining it. Who privily, secretly shall bring in, what kind of heresies? That means they're already damned for teaching it. And they mean to damn those who believe it. Even denying the Lord that bought them. It's always going to be about a different gospel. Different one. So, tell you a story. Another story. If I told you who this lady was related to, some of you would go, man and a woman comes to our church from down south of us. They say they've heard us, see me on the internet, find it very interesting. So my chest comes out. Thank you. We invite them in. They, and they say that after they're there for a while, they want to have a meeting with me and kind of, they, they used to be in the Hebrew root stuff and they're trying to come out of that and they've got some questions. So I sat down with them in my office and it didn't take me very long to figure out who was wearing the britches. Because every time they'd ask a question and I'd start to give an answer, she would go, oh yeah, but, yeah, but in the, in the and she'd start arguing with me right then and there. While the husband just sat there. And I got nowhere with those people. You know why they were there? Lisa, tell these people why they were there. Let's sell vacuum cleaners. <laughs> sell vacuum cleaners. Thank you. He was a vacuum cleaner salesman. And when he, I won't tell you what brand, but when he made his route through the church, they left. And then they went to another church that some of you know. In the guise of somebody that joined into that family. And when he made his way through everybody in that church, Selling vacuum cleaners. Left. Arr! The only reason why they were there is the money. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil speak spoken of. You know what the way of truth is? The King James Bible. So... Let's say you got a guy sitting in your church that during Sunday school says, well, my Bible doesn't say that. My Bible says something different. He either needs to be taken and educated, hopefully. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he's, that's all he knows. And you can help that guy along, but keep your eye on him. Because he may be there to start stealing people out of your church. He may be already calling people saying, Hey, I hold a Bible study at my house on Thursday nights. Why don't you come over? I love to talk about the Bible. If the pastor didn't organize it, you don't go. You don't go. That's a wolf. I'm telling you. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness. That's their goal. They want, they want, they want, they want. It is far more blessed to receive than give. No! It is far more blessed to give than to receive. They're there to take. What doesn't belong to them? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. I mean, it's not time to judge them yet, but God's going to. 
By the way, I pass this up. Through covenant shall they with feigned words. You know what that means? Fake words. And I've got written next to that in real small print. That's a little note that I was supposed to leave for myself. False Bibles are feigned words. So, you get you a preacher. And I know of a church right now looking for a preacher. And I've been asked to pray for that church because they're saying, if we get some guy in that does not believe the King James, we're gone. Good for them. Good for them. I actually got involved. I, I, I looked. This was back years ago before really the internet was the internet. And I found, believe it or not, I found a website where free will Baptist preachers could go in and chat with one another and sort of talk about issues that relate to the church and the denomination and so on. And you know what I found in that chat group? It was a whole section on how to get rid of the King James Bible out of the church you're pastoring. And I read names of men that I had heard of say, well, I got myself a church like that. Everybody had this old, old fellers and they all had King James Bibles and I didn't want to go that way. I, I used the New American Standard. Which one? And so I, what I did was the first year I just kind of let it go. And the second year I was there, I would introduce into the sermons. Now, the original Greek kind of gives this sort of a better idea. The original Greek does. I studied the original Greek. I got a, I got a B plus in Bible college in the original Greek. I really did. I got a B plus. In, <laughs> I got a D minus in the book of Revelation at Hillsdale Free Will Baptist College. D minus in Revelation. I blew it. Anyway. It was because it was an amillennial teaching me. Okay. I won't tell you who. But anyway, so then he said, then he said, after I started doing that, then I'd say, now a better translation is. And he said, it takes time, but over time, you get younger people in and you can get them King James people out of the way to where they don't have an effect on you. And I'm going, you snake. If for some reason I left Bethel, and let's say a church called me and they said, Pastor, we've heard of you, we want you to come and try out for our church. I'd go down there and I'd say, now listen, before I ever preach, I only use the King James. I will never, ever, ever, ever use any other Bible. And I will preach the King James Bible and I will preach King James onlyism in this church for as long as I'm here. Now, if that's a problem, let's have a vote right now. See, I wouldn't try to hide it from them and take the church because I need a paycheck. But that's why some guys do it the way they do. They got out of their old church and they need the money. So we're going to go to the other church, be hireling there. Fain words, false Bibles shall make merchandise of you. Jude said it this way, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the, of the common salvation, it was needful... By the way, uh, Brother Mike, again, you, you just... It, it doesn't matter if it's Assembly of God, Free Will Baptist, Baptist, General Baptist, Southern Baptist, Independent Baptist, United Baptist, uh, Conservative Methodist. It's a common salvation. It's the blood. Amen. There's only one way. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the what? Faith cometh by hearing by earnestly contend. That means draw your weapons. See, I got, I got a guy in my church, ex-military, and I let him open carry in church. He's got a big old, I don't know what it is. Something Clint Eastwood used in Magnum Force, I think. <laughs> Pulls it out like this. <laughs> you know why I do that? I, I just want people to know that the good guys are safe. Amen? Amen. See, 
I don't think he'll ever have to draw it. I don't think he will. Because he's just showing it right there. He's got it. Amen? Isn't that why you have a sword to begin with? It's so you hope to never have to use it. But if I have to, I got it. Earnestly, that's earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in. How? That means they slithered in. And you didn't know it. You weren't watching. You weren't paying attention. The devil got you. And it's, it, it, preachers, it's easy for us. We get sidetracked. We get sidestepped. This is why we work on trying to build... A strong congregation. Because pastor can't see everything. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, pastors, if you'll build a strong congregation, they'll come snitch. <laughs> Won't they? <laughs> pastor, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to stir up trouble. I don't, but I got to tell you about somebody that's been coming. I got to tell you about what's going on, what I found out. They'll do that for you. Because you know Why? They love their church and their pastor just like you do. And they're going, we're not about to go through no church split. We're not about to allow these wolves to come in here and steal our people out. We're not about to have this go on. Not while I'm here. I was 13 years old when Bethel Free Will Baptist Church went through a church split. And I watched it happen. And these, all of these people, these grown-ups, Clark, were people I loved. They were my Sunday school teachers. They were people I had spent the night in their homes. And when I saw one of these women get up, Brother Dale McCurry used to be the, he used to be the uh, supervisor out here at the Free Will Baptist Camp in Missouri. He was one of the most godly deacons. God gave me that man as a role model to look after. I looked up to him. And when I saw this woman get up and slap him in the face during a business meeting in our church, I cried, I wept. And that church split that night and I was so angry. And I said to myself, Mike, if you ever pastor a church, you're never going to let this happen. Because it all happened in, in a business meeting. Wolves don't vote. They go, oh! That's how sometimes you can spot them it's in the business meeting. We don't have them. Every now and then. What? We don't have them. We got a group of guys that I trust. I, I got to get to this. I got to get, I got to get to this. I got to talk about a guy. Let me read this. It was needful for me to write unto you to exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints for there are certain men crept in unawares which were before of old ordained to this condemnation. That's exactly what Peter said. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. What does that tell you? They don't have God. They are Godless. Non-God. Men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and, Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it's all about the real gospel versus the millions of fake ones that are out there. And they're everywhere and they're all on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. And whatever Twitter, whatever social media you use, they're there. What form will they come in? Number one, pastors and preachers or evangelists. Pastors can be wolves. Preachers can be wolves. Evangelists can be wolves in sheep's clothing. Jeremiah 10, 21, for the pastors have become brutish. You know what the word brutish means? Beast-like. Isn't, isn't that what Peter said? These as natural brute beasts made to be taken and what? Re re reformed? Destroyed. You cannot teach a wolf to preach. And have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper. And that all their flocks shall be. When I first took Bethel. Again I didn't want it. We went through some horrible days. Part of it was my fault. But I'll never forget the first year. 
I used to have a place where I'd go pray in that church where nobody could find me. We had Christian school and daycare, so we had a building full of people all the time. And I used to have a place behind the baptistry where I'd go pray and hide. And I remember one time there was a dark, evil spirit come over me. And I mean, I like, I'm like, I got to leave. I got to leave the church. I'm leaving my wife. I'm leaving my family. I got to get out of here. I got to run. That's what happened to me in Kenya, Mike. You saw it happen to me out there. He knows what I go through. And I mean, it was just jumping. It was just tearing me up in part. And I'm back there praying, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I don't know what else to do. I got to leave. I'm being told to leave. I'm hearing voices say, leave, leave, leave. Get out, get out, get out. And finally, the Holy Ghost said, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. That's what this is. Well, I reached in my pocket and opened up a can of spinach and I went, look, 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 like that. Da, 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 da. And I mean, I said, ah, I'm not leaving. And buddy, the spirits fled. I saw a church sign. It's by our, it's by our home. We see it all the time. Church put out a church. And I hate stupid church signs. Hate them. They never put scripture up there. They just put some stupid thing up there. And this one said, whenever you see the devil, run. Is that what the Bible says? Resist the devil. You make him, make him run. I'm too fat and old to run. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Here's the vineyard right here. This is the true vine. And pastors every sermon are destroying this book every time they preach. They've trodden my portion underfoot. They've made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. You know what happens when you have a desolate wilderness? Read Isaiah 13 and Isaiah 34. That's when the dragons move in. Dragons love a wilderness. You know what I'm talking about? Spirits, devils. Dragons, serpents, snakes. There, there's an unlimited number of them that will come in any place where this is not. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastures, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You've scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. And I want to tell you something. God's held that over my head more than once. Doctrine wolves. Doctrine wolves. Wolves that will come into your church to bring in some strange doctrine. I heard something. I have not studied it yet, but what was it? Extreme grace? That it's like a form of Calvinism that says, you are so saved that you can drink, cheat on your wife, Look at porn. Do anything you want to. God's grace covers it all. That's a wolf doctrine. That's telling you guys what you want to hear in your flesh. Isn't it? Let's get honest. You tell me I can go out and sin all I want to. Still go to heaven. Adios, muchacho. Money wolves. They're there for the money. They'll steal it. They'll, they'll pound the pulpit every time the ties come in and they're not up to par. And all they preach is money. All they preach is money. They hit the pulpit and they yell at everybody about money, money, money. We got a new program. We got to start. We need money, 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 money. Money wolves. You got adulterous wolves. Pastor came to our town. Uh, Christian church. Pastor. 
instantly got his name in the paper because he's making big waves. He said, I'm going to convert this church. And man, we're going to, we're going to grow. We're going to build. We're going to bring people in. We're just going to have, we're, in fact, we're going to have to probably get out of this building. There was only like 50 people in that church when he got it. And he said, we'll probably have to tear the walls down, build new buildings. I mean, he just bragged and bragged and bragged about what he was going to do there. And I knew a guy at the time that was going to that church and come to find out. And this is what happened to him. He was going after every man's wife in that church. Adulterous wolves. Pastors will come in and they will either hunt for your wife or your daughter or even your son. Don't look at me like it don't happen. The spoilers, we talked about that. Pew members can be wolves. Those who secretly undermine pastoral authority in the local church. Do they exist? And by the way, pastors, you're not a dictator. I know pastors that you can't get married unless the pastor says you can. That you can't buy a house unless the pastor says, okay, you can buy that house. That's stupid. What do you think you are? Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your, not your bank account. What you got in the bank and what house you buy and whatever, is, that's your business. That's not the pastor's business. But your soul is his business. He's watching for your soul. And, the, and here's what's happened to me. I've had people get mad at me because I flushed some wolves out of the den. And all of a sudden, so-and-so and their family wasn't coming to church. And there was one man in his family that I said to them, Get out! Get out! I'm not your pastor and this is not your church. You've caused enough trouble here. Now leave right now! And don't ever come back. You know what they did? They went over to a friend of mine's church... Independent Baptist Church there in Festus. Six months later, pastor, my friend, called me. Brother Mike, I need to talk to you about so-and-so. Did they used to go to church here? Yeah. And I told him all about it. And he said, well, I'm fixing to have a church meeting on them. I'm going to have to run them out. I said, the quicker you get them out, the better. You know what the guy, you know what the guy that I told to leave told me? We've been in five churches already, been asked to leave all five. They watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. And the night that I threw that family out, I didn't take that lightly. I went outside and I literally physically picked up picnic tables and I threw them to get the grief and the anger out of me. I was a hulk, man. You should have seen me. <laughs> I hated doing that. There was a guy that went hiking at, at Moab Desert. And there's this little channel between rocks. People hike through there all the time. This was on the news. He went hiking through there one day. And all of a sudden a rock fell and it jammed his arm. Y'all remember that story? Jammed his arm between the rock that fell and the rock wall. He was there for what, six, six, seven days? Finally, he took a pocket knife because he smelled the rot on his thumb. And he started cutting his arm off with an old pocket knife. And he said, it got to that last nerve, Clark. He said, I touched it and it went zing like that. Ah! And walked out of there alive. And is alive now. But he finally had to cut that arm off. It's worth it, wasn't it? Sure hurt though. And it will every time. It's supposed to. A certain man named Ananias and Sapphira with his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to Ananias and Sapphira were wolves in sheep's clothing. Money wolves. Old foolish Galatians who hath bewitched you. They, there was a witch in this church. There was a witch 
in that church preaching. I can recognize in Galatians the witchcraft doctrine because I study this stuff. I know, what, I know how to spot it. And Paul was describing witches, Wiccan, elemental Wiccan witchcraft in the book of Galatians. That, he didn't just use that word just as like a, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to call them witches. He meant what he was saying. There's only two religions in this world. And that's Bible Christianity and witchcraft. And every other religion in the world is a form of witchcraft. You name it. You narrow it down. I'm telling you. Galatians 2. And that because of false brethren. What kind of brethren? They're not really saved, are they? Unawares brought in. Privily. Who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into... There's some people that just don't like people being free. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. That's the key right there. They're there to destroy the truth of the gospel. And without the gospel, what do we have? Nothing. And he said, but of these who seem to be somewhat, they weren't just brother John Simpson coming to preach. It's Dr. John Simpson. Because he's a doctor. No, he's not. You're not supposed to put them flattering titles. Don't call me reverend. I hate that. I'm just Mike. Pastor Mike's fine. Brother Mike's fine. Don't call me doctor nothing. Don't call me reverend something. But these somewhats, they like being seen up on the stage during the meeting. Every, all the other preachers are looking at them wishing they could be up on the stage like they are. I went through that phase. I wanted to be big in the denomination. I wanted to be hot snot, man. God run me right out. Or maybe some of y'all did, I don't know. <laughs> But these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Paul said, I don't care, I don't care who you are. You preach something false here, I'm going to run you out. God accepteth no man's person. Underline that in your Bible. God accepteth no man's person. Well, I've been pastoring 60 years. I've built 43 churches. I've seen 30,000 salvations in my life. Who cares what you used to do? You're nothing. Christ is everything. And what you've done is you set yourself up as a little pope. This is what you've done. These are pew members. They seem to be somewhat... These are people with money in your, in your church. These are people who have large families in your church... That if the vote doesn't go their way, they're going to make sure that it does. And I could tell story after story. Gossipers. This is going to be mean, but just let me do it for a second. Then I'll go to Festus and get out of your way. When I mention gossipers, whispers, backbiters, double-minded, when I mention gossipers, whispers, backbiters, what sex comes to your mind immediately? Am I right? That's no, not exclusive. But it's true. Double minded, two faced. I had a man on my board. I trusted him. I tried every way to befriend him. He seemed like he was always for me and for the church and for what we were doing. Then he beat his wife up. 
And when I found out about it, and I'm talking to the wife, she said, Brother Mike, you don't know the half of it. You'd preach, we'd leave out of church, he would start in immediately. I wonder how Lisa wrote that sermon for him. And he would just mouth me constantly. He hated my guts and was on my board for, I'm going to say at least 10, 15 years. Hated my guts. And I knew trouble was brewing. But when I found out he beat up his wife, I called the other guys on the board and I said, you guys going to put up with that? And they said, no, we put him out right then and there. Of course, he never showed up ever again. They divorced. They can talk to you real nice and slick to your face and chew you up one side down the other. And see, what happened was, it caused a, it did, it caused a rift in our church. And when he left, about a dozen people went with him. And there was another guy with him that they had worked together. And they were having, get, get this, they were having Bible studies at his house on Wednesday nights. We have one on Wednesday night. We already have one. We don't, we don't need two of them. But that's what that was all about. It was about the other guy trying to draw people to himself. And it worked for a while. Until the other guy, in one of these meetings, got mad at a 19-year-old young man who was married into that family and took him outside, made him get on the ground, and he started hitting him. But then the 19-year-old guy grabbed him down and started punching him in the nose like this. Blood shot everywhere. The guy gets up like a little girl running to his car locking the doors. Bleeding! And I preached that to our church because there were people in the church that were begging. They were mad at me because I had asked those people, or those people left. And I wouldn't let him come back because I knew what kind of trouble he was. I knew how double-minded and two-faced he was. John knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I preached that story to our church. And those people came back. Pastor, we are sorry. We didn't know. I know you didn't know. I don't get to tell everybody's business. Maybe you should trust me. Maybe. By the way, a lot of those people that left, they've all come back. And it was like water under the bridge. They walked in, I hugged them, we hadn't even brought it up. Never going to bring it up again. Uh, the only reason why I did it today, use that as an illustration, they will be there. And I liked this guy. He was trouble. Evil communications. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. The word mark is there. You think that might have something to do with Revelation 13? Guarantee it. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And, and, and avoid them. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. See, the belly's where the appetites are. Some of you are going, boy, I wish my cargo would hurry up. <laughs> That's good preaching, but man, my belly. See, all your appetites, your romance appetites, and everything is right here. And they serve that, don't they? It is the main goal of 99% of TV ministries is money. Social media, Facebook... Facebook, you can get money. YouTube videos, monetized. People get money. People, they came up with a flat earth one day. Earth is flat. Instantly overnight. The earth is flat. And videos all over the internet. Making tons of money for the people making the videos. And it's all a lie. Websites that are advertiser driven. Quit believing the internet. 
Except for when you watch the Watchman video broadcast. <laughs> but chiefly them that... I'm going to move. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government. That means they will despise biblical authority. Sovereign citizens. Watch out for them in your church too. I only serve Jesus Christ. I don't serve any government. Our government's evil. That's the new world order. Hey, are we not all under a constitution here? Is that not still in effect? Walk after the flesh and lust of uncleanness, despise government. Presumptuous are they. That means they can sin and presume they can get away with it. Self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. That means your pastor or the leadership of the church. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Not even angels will do that. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and they shall utterly perish in their own corruption who remembers this lady right come on raise your hand who bought her books yeah we got a few honest people in God's house today Gwen Shamlin she, is a, she was a dietitian, had a master's degree. She was pretty, pretty smart. And she wrote a book about how to lose weight. And she said that she was a Christian. Guess what denomination? Does anybody know what denomination she was in? Church of Christ. What Church of Christ believe? That you're all going to hell. And the Church of Christ had to put her out. She wrote several books, made a bunch of videos, had 30,000 churches doing her programs all throughout America with her teaching her gospel of weight loss. And it got to the point literally to where she said, Satan is tempting you to eat. I gotta eat! Amen? But that's what she turned the gospel into. Then it got into a multi-level marketing thing. And when the Church of Christ and Brentwood, her publisher, put her out because she said there's no such thing as a trinity, she built, she took the money, built her own church, named herself pastor, married Tarzan, Really? There was a TV show back in the 90s called Tarzan, this big, long-haired, good-looking muscle guy. Well, he's like in his 60s now, but he's still, I mean, he's had 14 face, you know, tucks and everything like that. His face is frozen, but he's still got muscles. He looks good. She dumps her old, fat husband, marries him in 2018, builds this big church, changes the gospel to a weight loss gospel, got full, raking in millions of dollars. Her, her husband goes out and buys a cheap jet, fixes it up to make them look like they're rich. Back in May, they took off out of uh, Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, to go to Florida to a MAGA conference. They got 3,000 3, feet up in the air, turned around, went straight down into a lake, and the impact, there was seven people. The leadership of the whole church was in that plane, seven people. It ripped their bodies to pieces. And HBO was in the midst of doing an expose of her and her wolfish ways. Now when the world figures out there's a wolf and you didn't find it out first, there's something wrong. You better watch out what you're getting from the bookstore. Spots they are. What time is it? Spots they are and blemishes. Let me show you what that looks like. Leopards. Can leopards change their... No. You know that red dot on Indians? It's called a bindi. And it's a Sanskrit word. You know what it means? Spot. But isn't that interesting? 
that that's the very thing that the Bible says true religion and undefiled is this, that a man keep himself unspotted. Sister Connie, you're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. What apostle told us to put a mark on our forehead? What part of the Bible told us to let a priest put a mark on our forehead? You watch, people. You watch. The mark's coming. And it ain't no vaccine either. Knock that off. Uh oh. <laughs> These are wells without water. Look at this. You know what Proverbs said? Jude said, clouds they are without water. Proverbs said, whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. The Old Testament tells you what a cloud without water is. It's people who boast of, I got the gift of tongues. No, you don't. No, you don't. I got a word of knowledge about you, Brother Mike. No, you, tell me what part of the Bible it was in. No, 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 God told me this personally. I don't believe it. Words of wisdom, gifts of healing, slain in the Spirit. If these people who say they have a gift of healing really have the gift of healing, then why do they charge you $30 to come into the convention center? Why don't they go to the hospital, start at the top floor, and send everybody home that's got COVID? You're healed, you're healed, you're healed. Go home, you're healed, you're healed. False gifts. I'm about done. I don't know how far to take this. Raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars. Now I have a picture of the solar system up here to explain the word wandering stars. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. I won't say the... I'll say Oranos. That's better than the other one. And Neptune. The reason why they're called wandering stars is that... During the summertime, you can look up toward the north, you can see the Big Dipper, which is the, the, the bear. During the wintertime, you can look up, you can see Orion. And it's in the same place every year. Fixed stars. We navigate by them still to this day. Guys pull out a sextant and they navigate by the sun and the stars because they're fixed. They don't. But there were certain dots in the sky that they noticed was over here, and then it was over there, and then it moved over here. And so the Greek word was planetes. Planets. Wandering stars. That's preachers or people. I know a guy, if I mention his name, you'd know him. Some of you. He is now in his fifth major Religious conversion. Fifth major religious... I'm not talking about he went from Southern Baptist to Independent Baptist. I'm talking he went from one cult to another cult to what we might say is true Christianity to a false form of that and now he's into Hebrew roots. Fifth change in religious philosophies. He's only like 30 some odd years old. You know what he is, Jamie? And you can't count on him. And these people that come into our churches, that have left other churches, you might ought to talk to them. Find out how many other churches they came from. Because if they're church hopping, the first thing they're going to do when they come in your church is try to tell you how wrong you're doing everything. You ever had that one? I have. You know, Brother Mike and the churches that the other churches that we went to, we used to do this. And I went, I heard the word church is. And sure enough, and see, they wanted us. This is back before I was pastor. They wanted us to change how we added members to our church just to accommodate their children in order to keep them there. And I promise you, 
whatever change you make to keep them there, they still either going to leave or they're going to make you change something else. People, it's not worth it. I have fought. I have fought so many. We we almost. I want to tell you this. We almost lost our whole radio station ministry in Kenya just recently from one of our station managers who was a wolf in sheep's clothing. They caught him with an identity card with his picture on it and my son-in-law's name and state ID. He had a forged ID. He was forging my son-in-law's signature on documents. He started his own company and was in the process of moving our radio stations under his authority to steal them away from us. And my son-in-law caught him stealing money out of his wallet and that's what started him looking into everything. And I won't say a whole lot because Michael gets mad at me when I tell you how he ended up. But I can tell you he ended up in the hospital. The police put him there. We almost lost everything we had built over there. And I mean hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of radio, food ministry, everything. We almost lost it by a wolf. And I'll tell you how good God is. The Kenya communicate on after we caught this guy. We're going. The Kenya Communication Authority decided they were going to pull licenses of radio stations that were not in compliance. And ours wasn't because this guy was stealing all of our equipment. They shut down over 120 radio stations. They left one radio station in Samburu, Watchman FM. And they left one radio station in Turkana, Watchman FM. They left ours open and running. God did that one. God did that one. Which is why I got beat by the devil for the last two weeks with COVID, stress, everything that's going on. I've been laid up at home, sucking my thumb, crying like a baby. Devil's just beating me to death. But it's a victory. And when you get a victory from God... You run off like Elijah did and say, Lord, it is enough. Now take away my life. Don't you? You guys have been all through this. I'm not telling you anything you have not ever experienced before. But just let me encourage you to keep standing. Because it is, your labor is not in vain. It's not in vain. And you'll, you're going to stand and lick your wounds. And you're going to cry. And you're going to look at the pews that were filled and now they're empty. But at least you've got people there that are like David's mighty men and they say, Pastor, don't worry about us. We're staying.